Have you always known that you're on a soul path? And have you wondered how to gain real insight into the steps along your own unique journey? Welcome everyone, I'm Sarah Main, and thank you for joining me on Dhammayanti, the show for your soul. It's great to have you join me. Dhammayanti means deep peace and calm. Dhammayanti sheds a light for your soul through the gift of wisdom that shines in the beautiful and universal language of Sanskrit. Dhammayanti is the show that speaks to your soul, connects with your soul and enriches your soul. Hey everyone, this is Dhammayanti, the show for your soul. It's great to have you here and I'm Sarah Main. And in today's show, we are going to look at the abundant creative universe. And is this where you live? Is this where you want to live? The abundant creative universe. Okay. Um, there's a, for quite a long time, there's been this idea, this sort of competitive idea of lack that we're all competing for these scarce resources, this finite amount of stuff. Okay. This finite amount of ideas um, of houses to live in, of food to eat, of, you know, whatever, anything that's, and it's scarce. And there is an alternative that's really um, in the ascendancy now. It's, it's gaining strength and that the, the, the universe is endlessly creative and abundant. Okay, so let's dive into this and explore this world of limitless creativity and abundance. And I'm going to give you eight tips on how you can get easy access to this. Okay, so let's choose where we live. Choose where we live. Are we going to live in scarcity or are we going to live in abundance? Okay, really important. <clears throat> scarcity or abundance. So let's consider abundance consciousness. Abundance consciousness and abundance mindset. In the coaching world, I was an executive coach for many years and also a teacher for many years. Having an abundance consciousness is like 101 baseline, an abundance mindset. And that's not just financial, that's an abundance of opportunity, an abundance of love, an abundance of um, beauty, of talent, of learning, of expansion. All right, this creative, expansive mentality. And we contrast that with a scarcity mentality. So abundance consciousness versus scarcity mentality, abundance mindset versus scarcity mindset. All right, different words, but all meaning the same thing. All right, creativity is limitless. Creativity is, it's not finite. It's the very definition is it's not finite. It's limitless. It's infinite. There's always possibilities. So we have this creative mindset or we can have this sort of competitive way of thinking where we're all competing for one thing, for a scarce resource. You know, if you're in a competition, nothing wrong with competitions, but if you're in a competition, there's one prize there's a winner and they get one prize. So that is a scarce resource. And we know that um, if everyone gets a prize, then that kind of weakens the point of the exercise in terms of competition. But in terms of, you know, competition's one thing, but if we're talking about an abundance mindset, an abundance mentality, then there is limitless possibilities. Creativity is limitless and um, the resources are limitless. So we always have the power to create. We always have the power to originate something new. There's always that potential to create within us, even when we just don't feel like it or we just can't see our way clear, we feel stuck, we feel trapped in some situation or mindset. There is always the potential. The supply is not limited. The supply is not finite. Life is not a zero-sum game. I don't know if you've heard that expression before, zero-sum game. Life is not a zero-sum game where we all have to compete with, with each other to get anywhere and to get anything, drawing from a finite, limited p 
pool of resources and supply. The supply is unlimited. And that is a, a mindset you need to actually work at generating and learn. So that is your baseline mindset is that there is always possibilities because you can say, yes, 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 Sarah, yes, I'm hearing you. But when push comes to shove, we, we snap back into that limited supply, limited resources, stuck situation, zero-sum game, we're in competition and solutions are not found in and good solutions are not found in that situation. Creativity is limitless. That's where the abundance is. So no matter how difficult or dire the situation, there's always a way out of it. There's always a solution, um, but it's in creativity, okay? And that's a creative mindset rather than sort of this uh, limited supply competitive mindset. So remember abundance mindset versus scarcity mindset. That's what we're really focusing in on. Now, the, the natural law of the universe is abundant. It is abundance, not scarcity. Just hear that. The natural law of the universe is abundance, not scarcity. So if you really work to training yourself to think in terms of abundance in all situations, not scarcity, it's revolutionary. If we change the way we think when we look at things, then the things we look at change, all right? So just think, the natural law of the universe is abundance, not scarcity. Um, a single seed of wheat, which and, and wheat seeds are tiny if you've never seen one, um, that produces a stalk with a hundred more seeds on it. The, the, the universe, God, the divine spirit, cannot help but be abundant. Um, the, and just think of that single seed of wheat producing a stalk with a hundred more seeds on it. Um, a, a few fish in a pond soon fill the pond with more fish. Okay, it's just natural, this growth. Um, so the struggle to compete for scarce resources is something, it's it's a dangerous fallacy and it, and. Oddly enough, it creates the very thing that people are frightened of, which is scarcity. So if you're in this sort of struggle to compete for scarce resources, um, it will create the scarcity that you're fighting against. Um, and in, in a strange way, it's a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. That's why this it's really important and in the coaching world, you know, working with clients to have an abundant abundance mindset rather than a scarcity mindset and for the coach to come to the situation that the client's presenting with an abundance mindset that there is always a way forward that the client can always um, overcome the issue and find an exciting and new way forward and similarly in teaching that there is always a solution that the student can learn they may learn in a different way. They may learn at a different pace. But there is always a way forward. It's a very, very important switch to have in your mind. And you need to work at it. I've certainly had to work at it. And for heaven's sake, I've had it since I was young. My dad always used to say, um, the universe will give you anything you dwell on and it will give it to you in abundance, packed down and overflowing. Okay, this is my dad, very wise guy. He used to sit on the couch and he would say, the universe will give you anything you dwell on and it will and, and it will be given to you in abundance. So be careful what you dwell on because he said you'll be given it packed down and overflowing. So if you dwell on fear, you'll get fear packed down and overflowing. If you dwell on lack, you will get lack packed down and overflowing. If you dwell on love, you will get love packed down and overflowing. If you dwell on abundance, you'll get abundance packed down and overflowing. It's the nature of the universe. So how do we develop an abundance mindset? Mm, this is the big question. How do we develop an abundance mindset?
So I'm going to go through eight top tips. They're really practical, really useful. So eight tips on how to develop an abundance mindset. One, be mindful of your thoughts and emotions. Now this comes back to being in the present moment. You need to be mindful. You need to be aware. You need to increase your self-awareness. And that means taking a deep breath, coming into the present moment now. Be present, fall still. Come into the present moment with me here and now. Feel your feet on the floor. Be aware of your body. Be aware of your surroundings. And be present here and now. Hear my voice. And be mindful of your thoughts and emotions. And start noticing when negative thoughts arise about yourself and others. And instead of judging those thoughts and pushing them away, all right, just acknowledge them, spot them, oh, notice them. You might be a bit curious, but I caution you on the curiosity element a little bit. You don't want to go into some rabbit hole about them and where they've come from, okay? Delving into the origins of all of that is, um, well, the actual uh, um, wisdom traditions in Sanskrit say that that is the way of madness to do that. Um, you don't delve into the origins of ignorance. It says you just acknowledge them sort of have that sort of open curiosity and compassion, understanding, okay, and then let them go and release that negative thought about yourself or others and choose positive alternative thoughts, okay, actively choose that. So, you know, go from that to that. And you might have to do that several times. So number one is be mindful of your thoughts and emotions and learning how to spot them when they're negative and releasing them about yourself or others. And reframing is really good to do in that situation. So when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. All right. So reframing is a very, very powerful tool like um, I know someone who was uh, cleaning out their pantry they lived in the country and they were cleaning out their pantry because a mouse had got in it happens if you're in the country and you know it was a bit of a pest that to pull everything out and clean it out you know and the mouse had got into the you know, some of the dry goods and things and they realized they hadn't sort of stored things securely enough fine it's not a big drama but it was a bit of a pest and, you know, ugh, you don't want a, a mouse in your pantry. But reframed it, It um, this person said to me, you know, it gave them the opportunity to just take a whole new look at how they stored things. It got them motivated. They knew they needed to clean the pantry out. It was just one of the jobs on the list. And they'd been putting it off for, you know, quite a few months. And then the uh, entry of the mouse there was no putting it off anymore. The whole project of cleaning the pantry out had to be escalated to the top of the list. And they got onto it and it just gave them a whole new perspective. How did they use the things in the pantry? Did they need to store so much? How to store it? And they got excited and the whole energy changed and they're actually grateful for the mouse, okay, because the mouse was the prompt um, rather than saying, oh, I had a mouse. Um, so that's reframing, just seeing the whole thing, that how fantastic the universe sent me the mouse, um, you know, to get on with the job. So that's just an example of reframing. Um, and it's you, you change the way you look at things and the, and the things you look at change. And now this, this person's got this, you know, fantastic pantry that's really working and they're really on top of how to store things and they're excited about it. Just shifted the whole energy just by the mindset. Um. Okay, second one, number two, is focus on the positives in your life. Okay, focus on the positives in your life. Make deliberate choices to put your attention on the positives, all right? And, you know, sometimes it's, you, you don't feel like it, but you have to make deliberate choices every day. First thing in the morning, 
how fantastic. Um, you know, I've just had the best night's sleep or I've got a really comfortable bed to sleep in. Um, how positive that I've got a good job I enjoy or that I've got a lovely family, a beautiful family. I've Whatever it is in your life, I've got a beautiful view out my window, the sun shining. Focus on the positives despite anything, you know, don't watch the news, turn the TV off if, you, if that helps. Only go for positive things, all right? Make deliberate choices and focus on the positive. I did that quite a few years ago and, um, you know, I thought I was being realistic looking at negative things as well as positive, but didn't help me. I made a deliberate choice for the positive, changed everything. So put your attention on the positive and that's deliberate. Reframing is also a really good thing to do here as well, um, learning how to reframe a situation. Because um, remember, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Um, just think of the mouse in the pantry. <laughs> you know, how great, brilliant, you know, positive got a good clean pantry and I got it done you know it's a big thing off my list sort of thing okay number three keep your mindset free open and flexible that is avoid falling into a fixed mindset so keep your mindset free open and flexible and what that's saying is avoid falling into a fixed mindset um, so you need to just be open to growth and new possibilities I did a whole show on talking about lifelong learning um, and, how important, and how good it is to keep learning and how important it is and how natural it is um, to keep evolving and learning and growing because that's how we grow. So always be open in your mindset and be flexible. Things can change. Say, great, okay, you think you're doing this and all of a sudden the universe says, no, nah, you're actually doing this. And you go, okay, great, fine, this is where I'm meant to go. Um, so being open to that is really important important new possibilities open to growth being flexible okay the fourth one is practice self-care and balance this is really crucial and I've done many shows on this over the years of my my the life of my shows as conscious confidence and as Damayanti the show for your soul um, I've talked about self-care and balance um, and this is critical actually so take care of your physical health eat well exercise regularly get enough sleep and take breaks when needed just take a break for a few minutes come into the present moment just stop and pause and take a deep breath come into the present moment that's the real break don't sort of get onto social media initially take a break and come into the present moment get that into your uh, rotation of break taking where you come into the present moment first feel your feet on the floor on the ground get grounded open the hearing out feel the air on the face and the hands feel the body in the chair just come into the present moment take a deep breath fall still And that is the ultimate break. That's the break of all breaks. And if you did that five times a day just for 30 seconds, 10 seconds, you would notice a difference. I guarantee it, you would notice a difference. So practice self-care and balance. And I would honestly suggest you practice coming into the present moment as we just did. Number five, celebrate small wins. Celebrate small wins. I'm especially passionate about this. Um, my husband taught me about this, um, which was, you know, I think, oh, you know, he's just being silly. But honestly, it is one of the most powerful things is to celebrate small wins. Recognize your accomplishments each day, no matter how small they are acknowledge them acknowledge your wins like yay I got that letter posted today um, yay I sent that email off yay I replied to that message yay I got the dishes washed um, you know 
it, it can be the smallest thing, but celebrate the wins, really acknowledge them. That circles back into um, choosing positives, okay? It's so powerful. Um, I was cleaning out my office and, um, you know, there's sort of, did, I must say, a bit of reluctance, a bit of a pain in the neck to do it, but it needed doing. And it got down to um, sorting through stationery, old pens and notepads and stuff like that. And, I, and my husband said, look, I'll help. And all we did, you know, there were, we, we were busy. We got the major stuff done in the office, but then I had a pile of stationery to sort through. And there was just other stuff. And it probably would have taken me half, you know, an hour to finish it off. But he said, look, all we'll do is 10 minutes every day, five minutes every day. And so we just set the timer. On, <laughs> he set his timer on his phone. One day we only have like five minutes before we went to bed and we came up and we just spent five minutes and we sorted through a pile of notebooks and, he, and the timer went off and I was ready to keep going. He said, nope, we're only doing five minutes. And then we went to bed. And then on another day we had 10 minutes, right? And it was in the evening because we were busy. And, and each time then we could look at ourselves and say, yes, we've moved that forward. We've moved that forward. And if there's a pile of laundry, he's really good at just folding one thing and then walking away. And by the, you know, by the end of the day, the basket of laundry is folded. Um, whereas I tend to sort of it's all or nothing a bit. So celebrate those small wins because, honestly, that is one of the best things to develop an abundance mindset and that feeling of success and increase and, and do that every day. Number six is surround yourself with positivity. Spend time with positive people, people who uplift and support you. Read things that uplift you. Watch things that uplift you. Listen to things that uplift you. I mean, hey, you're with me, you know, surround yourself with positivity. You really need to get into that energy because then you can be that sort of energy source for other people as well. All right, number seven, focus on solutions. Focus on solutions. Instead of dwelling on problems, look for solutions and opportunities. Okay, and that's the whole drawing the longer line, painting the bigger picture. So focus on solutions. Um, and sometimes I get into a mindset, you know, oh, what am I gonna and I'm trying to solve the problem within the problem and you don't realise you're doing it, but you just, right, what's the solution? Okay, I've identified the problem. What's the solution? Always on that solutions-focused um, approach. And the last one is practice gratitude. Number eight, practice gratitude. So, so powerful. Make a habit of expressing gratitude all the time. Uh, for what you have in your life, for everything, just express gratitude. That is so powerful in terms of this abundance, creative growth mindset rather than a scarcity mindset because there's always something to be grateful for, even the mouse in the pantry. In the, in, <laughs> all right. Um, and remember that story of drawing the longer line, the teacher walking into the classroom and drawing a line and saying, how do we make that line shorter without changing or touching it in any way? And after some discussion, he drew a line next to it that was longer and immediately that line was shorter. So that is an example of changing your perspective, changing to a positive solutions, expansive mindset and perspective. All right, very, very important and so, so powerful. So really important, pick one of the eight tips to wrap up today. Pick one of the eight tips for developing an abundance mindset. Actually make a conscious decision to do that and change from scarcity mindset to abundance. Um, and pick one of the eight tips for developing an abundant mindset and practice it every day for at least a week. And I'll just read them over now. So one, be mindful of your thoughts and emotions. Two, focus on the positives in your life. Three, keep your mindset free, open and flexible rather than falling into a fixed mindset. Four, practice self-care and balance. Five, celebrate small wins. Six, surround yourself with positivity. Seven, focus on solutions. And eight, practice gratitude. So good luck with it and get on get onto it. It's the best, best thing. Um, creating a new habit, if you 
practice 12 to 15 times a day for a minimum of 28 days, you'll form a new habit. So get onto it with those eight tips. There's tons to work with there and good luck with it. I know you can do it. You have the potential. And thank you for joining me today. Thank you for spending time with me today. And if you want to know more about Damayanti for Your Soul, go to my website, Damayanti for Your Soul at Damayanti.store. That's Damayanti.store. And there's, um, you can subscribe for the newsletter and there's products you can buy. I'm wearing my Shamar Patience Necklace, uh, Patience and Forgiveness Necklace. And that's in beautiful Sanskrit. I'm going to sing a beautiful Sanskrit prayer in a minute. And I've also got an Etsy store called All Things Eternal Shop. And at All Things Eternal Shop, there's lots of cool gear with positive mindset, supportive um, gear. There's, you know, obviously shirts and things, but there's also bags, cups. There's some beautiful plaques. There's jewellery. There's lovely, lovely things there. So All Things Eternal Shop on Etsy and my website, damayanti.store, where there's also jewellery. There's my blog, show archive, and sign up for the newsletter. So thank you for being with me. And I'm going to finish with the most beautiful, abundant prayer. This is for everyone, the universal prayer for all in Sanskrit. And it says, may all be happy. May all be without disease. May all have well-being and none suffer misery of any sort. May peace and peace and peace be everywhere. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu Ma Kaschiddu Kabhag Bhavet Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti. Thank you for spending time with me on Damayanti, the show for your soul. To find out more about Damayanti or to get my book, Conscious Confidence, to use the wisdom of Sanskrit to find clarity and success, or to purchase my range of beautiful spiritual jewelry, go to my website, damayanti.store. That's damayanti.store. See you next time.